Greetings folks, I have a fun review to do today. This is the Matek F411 flight control board for fixed wing. This could be one of those products that is just right in my opinion. I think in the future this will be my go-to flight control board for fixed wing. I have tested the F405 flight control board which is absolutely awesome. It's a revolution in my book with lots and lots of features, actually more features than I'm ever going to use. This 411 is smaller, cheaper, lighter, just has the features that really I'm going to use on a fixed wing plane. So it could well be a perfect product. So let's have a quick look at it, pull it out of the packaging. So there's the F411 board. You do need to solder your own pins on and it doesn't come with pins unlike the F405. Uh, we get a, a top plate or a, no that's a base plate and standoffs there and here's the lovely looking little board. A battery connection here, 2 to 6S, two motor connections there or ESC connections. This is where you connect the ESC signal wires, camera and video transmitter connections, micro USB port, a boot button there if you ever need to totally reflash the firmware. That's the I2C connection there for compass, uh, airspeed pitot tube or a little OLED setup screen. This is UART1 and UART2. You'd be connecting the GPS to this one here. S bus connection there. Buzzer, LED and 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 connections for servos. It doesn't have the black box uh, micro SD card recording, but it has everything that I need. So some of the key specifications and differences to the F405, it has a, a F411 chip as opposed to the F405 chip of course. Both have MPU 6006 axis gyros and accelerometers, uh, BMP 280 barometer. INAV OSD inbuilt, which is awesome, it doesn't have a black box, it has one of the big things with this board is that it has uh, onboard power, uh, current sensor, so you can get current and voltage up in your OSD. And it doesn't have onboard RSSI, but you can get that from your receiver anyway. Power distribution side of it, uh, as I said, six, uh, two to six LiPo, uh, two ESC power pads, current sensor 78 amp, has three separate BECs, which is awesome, it has a two amp, five volt BEC for the power to flight controller, receiver, on screen display, camera, buzzer, LED, uh, GPS, airspeed, all that sort of stuff. So that's a 2 amp uh, separate 5 volt BEC. For servos, it has a 3 amp continuous uh, 5 volt or 6 volt BEC, which is awesome, which is sort of equivalent to most uh, ESCs you'll fly your planes on. The thing is that this is totally separate just for servos, so if you're going to be pushing the limit of that. 3 amps, you're not going to be affecting flight control board or the receiver or anything else like that. Also has a 3.3 volt BEC for barometer, compass, OLED, spectrum, receiver. Continuous 200 milliamps and weighs 7 grams. Now the differences between the F411 and the F405, the big brother, uh, the F405 has the black box uh, micro SD card recorder has seven servo outputs, two I2Cs, six UARTs and a, and a full 5 amp BEC for servos. So the 411 only has three amps and he has two UARTs, one I2C and five servo outputs, but that is plenty for most planes. You would probably, in my view, use the F405 for a bigger plane with flaps and gear and uh, camera gimbal and stuff like that where you need the extra servo outputs and extra uh, BEC current. But for a normal fixed wing plane with no flaps, no extras, just something you want to FPV experience, then the F411 is perfect. At the moment it's $36.99 US, whereas the F405 is $46.99 US. They're both very affordable for what they are. Okay, so now I'll plug it into iNav Configurator and show you the quick setup. And then after that I'll solder up all the pins and in the next video I'll actually take it out for a fly on a plane. I don't know which one yet. You can just pull it out of the box and plug it straight into your computer. Get a few little flashing LEDs there. And then click connect on iNav Configurator. If you've got the right drivers, it will just show up. So click connect and it's showing up as a quad, so it hasn't been set up at all. I've just realized this is on 1.9.1. I want to update it to iNav 2.0 for all the 
latest goodies. So we'll disconnect and go through the firmware flashing process. So we click on firmware flasher. Choose the board and it's the Matec F411. There it is there, click that. Now I've got to choose the firmware and there's only one to choose from, so we'll choose that. Then we go down and click load firmware online and we're ready to flash the firmware. I think you do a full chip arrays as well up the top, so just flash firmware. Didn't need to push the uh, boot button for this one, just seemed to work. Flashing the firmware, this is always very exciting, a little bit scary as well, but it works. Programming successful, it's always very satisfying when that happens. So now we can connect and here we go, that's the familiar block that copies exactly what you do with the board in your hand. So now we can go through the calibration process and I've, you've probably seen this a hundred times. Um, we'll just zip through it extremely quickly. You basically do what it tells you on the screen. The order doesn't really matter. I think step one and step two probably do matter the right order. The other ones you just hold the board in different orientations and click uh, calibrate accelerometer. And that's all done. We'll move on to the next step. Back to the setup and you can see over in the uh, right hand side the accelerometer is calibrated. That's good. Go to the mixer. No, we don't want a quad. Blech. Aeroplane. Aeroplane. Load mixer. This is the new iNav 2.0 mixer down below too. Uh, which is awesome. So easy to use. After you've saved and rebooted. Back to the mixer again. Now, I don't have flaps on this one, so I'll get rid of those two inputs. Got the two ailerons there. Connection, get rid of one at the second motor because I don't need that. Save and reboot again. Reconnect. Presets, we'll load the presets for the aeroplane, which inputs the PIDs and the gyro settings and stuff like that, rates. They seem to work reasonably well for me. Now we'll go to the ports, and you don't touch the top line. Second line, UART1 is... Uh, your receiver, UART2 is your GPS, and mine uses 115200 board rate, I think. It seems to work at that. I don't really understand a lot about that. That's what works for me. Now we go to configuration, enable motor and servo output. Uh, you're getting warnings up above that that's telling you that that needs to be enabled. Make sure you've got the right sort of receiver connected. That's uh, SBUS. Click GPS for navigation. Yes. Disable CPU-based serial ports, I don't need them. What else do I need? That's all good. They all don't need the profile selection. If you have digital servos, you'd change the servo refresh rate to 300. I've only got analogs, I think, at this stage, so uh, leave it on 50 hertz, save and reboot. Now that PWM warning has gone away, so our servos are good to work. Now we'll set up failsafe. We want it to return to home on a failsafe, not land. That's all we need to do in that Screen, save and reboot. Advanced tuning. Now return to home and land settings. I want uh, return to home altitude 50 metres, not 10 metres. And I want it to be fixed at that height. I want it to loiter at the radius of 40 metres, not 50 metres. These are just my standard changes. Maximum bank angle, 40 degrees. Uh, reboot again. Receiver tab, I like to change the expo to 50, down from 70. 70 is too docile for me. Uh, I am going to use the RSSI on channel 16, I believe, using an SBUS receiver. Now you set up your modes. I've done other videos about how to do that. Now the on-screen display, we'll choose what we want to display. There's the RSSI, I do want that displayed on screen. Probably going to use an XM Plus receiver. I do like the heading graph just because it's cool. Metric units, get rid of all these alarms except for the RSSI because these will flash annoyingly if you exceed in. Save that. I uh, do like the Vario graph. Shows you graphically if you're climbing or uh, descending. Don't like the horizontal so, uh, sidebars, I get rid of them. GPS speed, yes, the number of satellites. Direction to home, another cool little arrow. And that is about it, I think, for the OSD. You can shift them around the screen to get them into a nicer position. That'll do me. And finally, there are a few CLI commands that it's recommended you input. Uh, these give you more usual performance for the plane, better, better roll. Uh, 
they're, they're listed on the INAV wiki anyway. There's uh, set max angle inclination roll and pitch to 600. Set the small angle to 180, which means it'll arm no matter what orientation the, the plane is sitting in. And set fail safe throttle low delay to zero. Uh, they're just recommendations from the INAV wiki. So um, whether you still need them or not, I'm not too sure, but uh, I do them. It doesn't hurt to do it anyway. And we're pretty well set up now. Uh, just have to solder on the, the pins. You can see the GPS is showing up in the top bar there. It's red because I haven't got a GPS connected, but if that's not showing up, if it's greyed out, you, haven't, you have to go back to the ports and set it up properly. So that'll do for this video. It's really just an introduction to this awesome little flight control board product that is just right, in my opinion. Good price, right features, not too much, not too little, perfect for fixed wing, FPV, INAV flight control. This is the Matec. F411 wing flight control board specially designed for fixed wing. Brilliant. Thanks for watching.